Wuben has been doing a great job innovating. Their soda can light, the X1 that's actually flat, is phenomenal with its built-in cooling and its unique shape. The X2 takes what would normally be found on high-end customs flashlights and integrates it with a customizable driver that you can set the output modes. And the X0, a phenomenal little right-angle flashlight with a built-in magnet and a great clip, now comes the X3. And the X3 is a really interesting light, and I'm not quite sure what to make of it. Welcome back to Shoe Lights. Today we're talking about the Wubin X3. This is a brand new flashlight by Wubin. Comes with these charging cradles you see above, and it comes in black and white. Now, this light, you know, at first I didn't know what to make of it. Um, it's a prototype. It's just coming out now. I've got assurances that the final design will look like this, meaning this kind of translucent plastic and then the head will be black or white. This is the micro arc oxidation white. And it comes with this cradle. Let's talk about the light itself. This is kind of a jack of all trades light. This is not the kind of light that I would carry solely, sad to say. And the reason why is because it does so many different things, but then its beam is a little less than stellar and I'll get to that later. But if you want a light that does a ton of different things, or maybe a backup light that you store in your car, then the X3 should be seriously on your list of lights to look for. So let's talk about what makes it special. With its mostly plastic case and just aluminum head, it's quite lightweight, extremely lightweight in fact. So this is the kind of light that you could throw in your bag and not know you're carrying it. Now let's talk about what makes it so unique. And that is, it has this twisting head. Now that allows it to do a bunch of things. For one thing, it is a right angle flashlight. You can just set it somewhere and illuminate what you're working on. Or with a twist, it becomes a flashlight that shines forward again. Notice that it's got these blue emitters here. Notice it's got this case. What's going on? Well, one thing is, this is a magnetic charging light. There are no ports on it. And this will work with standard magnetic chargers, which I'll have on screen right now. And you can see that when you lay it down on a magnetic charger, the indicator lights start flashing to indicate that it is charging. And when it's full, the indicator blue lights go out. So it's very easy to use on any standard magnetic charger that you have. But also, it comes with this cradle. And this cradle has a magnetic charger built into it. So you slide it into here like so. And then on the bottom here, there's a flappy doodle. But when it's closed, this flappy doodle is also a button. You press it and it comes to life, indicates status, and starts charging the light. I'll show you really quickly that the flashing of green indicates that the light inside is charging. Also, it is blue on the inside, a little hard to catch on video here, but you can kind of see it's a little blue in there. And that blue indicates visually that it's charging. Now, if I double click here, click, click, I can turn the magnet charging off at any time. Now, it also is smart enough to turn off on its own. When this is fully charged, it'll signal the case to stop charging and all this will turn off. Now, let's talk a little bit more about the case and the head and how this all works together. So yes, you can use this light on its own and it will charge with any magnetic charging pad. Or you can put it into this case and it will charge right here with its USB-C port and the included 3000 milliamp battery. So there's a 1000 milliamp battery in the flashlight itself, 3000 in here. So that gives you plenty of run time when you're out and about. And if you need to charge this flashlight or this case, all you need is a USB-C cable. The reason why it's designed the way it is with this translucent kind of flap up here is that when you insert it, I, at first, I, I'm going to be honest, I didn't know what was going on. I was like, what's going on with all this? But the thing is, is it makes sense when you turn the head. You turn the head, then you stick it in. And what you got now is you got controls up here. And if I press... This plastic acts like a diffuser and it turns it into a lantern. So I can do this and get a really nice bright lantern 
for inside or camping. Let's take a look at the light itself and its UI. So the UI here is on a little OLED display and that's kind of a fancy addition to this new light here. And when you turn it on with a single click, the indicator lights go on. Those can be turned off with five clicks. So one, two, three, four, five, and the indicator lights turn off and the light continues to work as normal. I'll turn them back on, one, two, three, four, five. On the screen itself, on this little OLED screen, it says that we're on level three right now and it has a state of charge battery right there. I'm a little less than full. But notice that if I press and hold, it cycles between level one through three. So one, two, three. And it's supposed to be one lumens, 50, and 150. Now, I found the one lumen to actually be over two lumens, which is sad for me because I love moonlight. And a moonlight mode should be well under a lumen. I'll take a moonlight that's at one lumens, but this is a little over two lumens, and it's definitely a low and not an ultra low or a moonlight. The 50 lumens comes in right around 50, and the 150 on my lumen tube was right around 150. Now, there's a hidden turbo when you double click, and it's supposed to go up to 700 lumens. I did not find that was true. I found that the light hit about 500 lumens at its peak. That's when it's fully, freshly charged, 500 lumens. And I also found that it quickly dropped so that it had almost zero sustain started about 500 and by just about 10 15 seconds in it was already at the 150 output range the level three so that's the first chink in the armor here is that the output isn't what they're claiming and it doesn't have great sustain however i will state that if you like a light that doesn't get hot to the touch when you're holding it all the heat is is kind of just sequestered up in the head here and when i'm on turbo and it's getting hot you don't feel it in the plastic at all and in my testing i ran it on turbo for at least half an hour i kept stepping it up stepping it up and trying to kill the battery i got it as hot as it would go and it was not a problem the light took it fine now another thing I'm not a great fan of is the actual beam shape. So if you take a look at most lights, like for example this uh, micro click Arcadian I have here, when you click them on they have a hot spot and then some corona or spill and they're pretty round. This light however has kind of the same thing that's going on with the X0 and that is it's got kind of a squarish beam. Let me see if I can, there you go, get that on camera for you. Can you see that this is actually a little like kind of a, a squircle? It's a little square, but a little rounded. Let me go up a few notches in case it helps my video quality. All right. Well, I found that that's the same thing with this light. Hopefully you can see, and maybe I'll cut to a white wall right now, that there's these petals on the top, bottom, left, and right. Now, when you get far enough away, the petals do disappear, but I kind of noticed them up to distances of even 10 to 20 feet. So I feel like the optics aren't well optimized for the emitter that's in there. I also found that outside, another light like this Micro Arcadian, which puts out about 500 lumens, and this one's about 500 as well, I noticed that this one throws a heck of a lot farther. And at first I wasn't sure why that was, but then I realized that the Micro Arcadian here, when you put on turbo, has a really intense hot spot and then a corona, but the spill is kind of decreased. There's not a lot of spill. But with the X3, notice that the spill is actually kind of bright. So let's look at them side by side. And you can see how much more intense the Micro Arcadian is than the X3. Now the X3 has also stepped down already, and that's because the X3 has no sustain. So if I double click, or click out and double click again, you'll see that it is just not as bright at the start, and then it gets much dimmer as it runs. By the way, any kind of uh, scrolling or flipping around you're seeing on the display here, that's just a feature of the shutter of my camera. In person, this OLED display looks crisp and clean and steady.
Now I have the light charged, but it isn't topped off. So if I don't hit 500 on here, just note that I've been playing with this light during the review here and it might get about 450 or so lumens. But let's take a look at that and see the drop off I was talking about. So I'm not at high yet. Let's go ahead and double click. And you can see that I'm a little less than 500 lumens. I expected that. But notice that within 10 seconds here, how much it drops. And now coming up to 15 seconds, I'm almost at the high levels. And well before ANSI, I'm at high now. And now it's just going to sustain around the high levels. So that is kind of a problem with the output for this light. All right, let's do some beam shots with this X3. Now, as always, the white balance is locked, the exposure is locked, and this tree right here is 20 meters away, and not this tree, but this further tree is 55 meters away for reference. So let's go ahead and turn the light on, and let's put it at 150 lumens first, and you can see we hit that tree no problem. And off to that second tree, I can see a little light is making it to that tree, but not that much. Now let's turbo, and there is that tree on turbo, and there's the tree at 55 meters. I've got a couple more single emitter lights with me for comparison. This is a Ray Lanapple. This is the Charles Wiggins Arcadian MicroClick. And the reason I've got these is these are both about 500 lumens on high. And I just want to show you how this 700 lumens really isn't kind of pulling its weight like you'd think. So let's go ahead and do the Micro Arcadian first. So I will click it on, 1001, go to Turbo, and see how much brighter the Micro Arcadian is than the X3. Let me go to turbo on the X3 and that's the you can see the difference is pronounced and over here it sees a big difference. Now let's take a look at the X3 versus the LAN Apple from Ray. So there is the LAN Apple and let's double click this one on to turbo and you can see the difference. So, pretty big difference between the 500 lumens this is putting out and other lights that are 500 lumens. And really, the tail of the tape has to do with the spill. The reason the X3 is dimmer than other 500 lumen lights has to do with the beam shape. So if I put this one on turbo, you can see that it's got a very hot spot, some corona, and then very little spill. There's a, just a little bit. You can see actually a ring at the edge of the spill because of the reflector I have isn't great. But you can see that it's pretty much putting it all in this area. On the X3, if I go to turbo, you can see that it's first off the hot spot is less bright because there's actually a brighter corona and as I move this away from the screen you can see the spill here actually is very bright look at the difference here see all that spill beyond the corona so really what's happening is a lot of light is put outside the hot spot into the corona and spill so if you want kind of a floodier light a light that will kind of you know light up the area better then this would be a really good choice however it doesn't reach as far because there's less light in the hot spot itself I wanted to take a moment to point out that the casing itself is actually glow-in-the-dark material. And this glow that you're seeing right around here on the edges is from the indicator lights. These indicator lights are enough to make it glow right there. But any light source, if you shine it at the case, will cause it all to glow very brightly. I'm such a beam snob that when I first started reviewing this light and I saw the pedals on the beam and I saw that the output wasn't as good as claimed. It kind of made me sad, kind of made me wonder if this light was good for anything, but that's not fair because this is a phenomenal backup light. Now I know that's silly. You're like, why would I need two lights? Well, no, I'm saying like if you're camping and you're going to bring two lights or if you want a light for the back of your car, 
And that's where this whole ecosystem comes in. The fact that it's ready to be a straight on flashlight for use, or you can turn it and make it a right angle duty light. The fact that it is magnetic. So the light's really good as a backup light. I really like the feature set that it delivers. The idea that I can just throw this in this cradle and have two batteries, the internal battery on the light itself and the battery of the case, and have it when I need it. And let's take a look at some extra features that really make it good for that. But I also wanna show you the built-in red modes. That's why it's got two emitters here. So if I press and hold, you've got a couple different modes. You've got a one lumen red, and you can see it says one lumen right here on the screen. If I press and hold, you got a very bright red. And this doesn't come over well on camera, but it's intense and it's deep red. It's 670 nanometers, so it will preserve night vision. Press and hold again, and you get yourself a strobe for, like, you know, on the road, you're changing a tire. You can, you know, slap this on the back of your trunk, and that's a great little flasher for that kind of stuff. When you go back to the white channels, so let me click on, I also want to point out that three clicks, one, two, three, puts you into an SOS mode. So there's SOS, and you see it's flashing out SOS. So that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, okay, a white light, a red light, not the brightest light, not the most optimized beam, but then look at all these strobes and, and uh, not strobes, but let's say flashers, red light flashers for warning and SOS. That's what this is, guys. This is a backup light. This is like a light for camping, for clipping onto your backpack and then turning like this when you're going down a trail so that you know you don't have to hold it with your hands. That's what this is. It's a camping and car backup light. And for that, I think it's very good. If you want to get this light, it's in a Kickstarter campaign right now. So look in the description below, and I've got some links to find you this light. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.